the United Nations Refugee Agency estimates that East Sudan has more than 100,000 Eritrean refugees. For over 40 years, they have been living in some of the worst conditions, neglected by most aid agencies. The Eritrean refugees issue is one of the biggest issues in the whole of Africa, maybe, since 1967. When the Eritrean refugees start to flood Sudan, for reason the war has been between Ethiopia and Eritrea. Uh, since that day, up to today, the people see the flooding from Asia. The refugee crisis in East Sudan is by far the longest standing refugee situation in Africa. 1,800 people arrive on a monthly basis to the camps, many of them fleeing forced conscription to the army, fleeing poor conditions, hoping for a better life for them and their families. Many are unaware of the, the realities of what camp life is all about. Many are born within the camps. They grow up, they marry themselves, they have children and even grandchildren. For them, this is the only life that they know. I don't think I've ever seen anything which really matches the institution and poverty and difficulty that they are going through. You, you can't say that it's life, to be honest, in all situations. It's not life at all. They don't have uh, the basic necessity of their life. Life in the camps, as I saw it, was about two main things. First of all, it was about survival. If you were able to make it till the evening, your mind was occupied about how you would make it till the morning. And if you were fortunate enough to make it till the morning, how you would survive till the evening. This is the first thing that life is about. Secondly, it's about waiting. You wait for a handout. You wait for some food aid to arrive. You wait for basic medical supplies. And some unfortunate circumstances, you're waiting for death because that's your escape. The kind of need that is just simple, simple food and clothing because these are the kind of things that allow them to live from one day to the next. The rest of their lives and how that they get, get on from one day to the next, Alhamdulillah, they're doing that. They're, they're preserving their Islam, they're, they're, they have good communities, they have their identity. But just want, we just want to give them ability, the ability to survive from one day to the next, to have some food. One home that we visited, if you can call it a home, was of a, of a woman who had four children. Unfortunately, three of them were mentally and physically challenged. So much so that they were tied to the beds that were in the house to stop them from harming themselves and stop them from running away. I asked her where her husband was and she said he left five years ago in search of work and food and hasn't returned since. And for that period of time, she had spent looking after her children. Regular food to families like this will ensure that at least the children that they have, they're able to look after. At least the situation that they're in is not made worse with the absence of food. Food for those people is life. It's really life. 